So with a golf swing like your driver, I can't guarantee a strike every time. You know, it's a difficult swing, but with short game shots around the green and, and pitching, you should have a technique that guarantees strike every single time. In this video, I'm gonna give you something, some insights that I learned from the world's best short game coach, Pete Cowan, and how the best players do it, but also how you can develop a technique that literally, no matter where you are around the green, you can improve the quality and the consistency of your strike because you're gonna to need to do this if you wanna get the ball close, judge distance control, you name it, okay? So before I get into lesson learned, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, you won't have to remember a thing, I'll always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. Okay, so this is typical, isn't it? You've left yourself short the green, you've got rough ground to go over, you wanna get a bit of height, land it, stop it next to the hull. I've got a cool drill I'm gonna make, that'll make it so much easier very, very shortly. So what this looks like is something like this. A little shot, pops it up in the air, lets it stop nice and releases, look, oh, hello, hello, nicely to the hole. That's all I want you to play. Super, super simple. Now, how do the best players do this? And how do they always seem to be able to get underneath the golf ball here and get that height every single time? Well, one thing they do is, is they always realize that this is a chipping action, not a full swing. So they set up very differently. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you've got to get your chipping set up first, otherwise none of the rest will work. So stage one is this. You don't have a wide stance. You don't set up in a normal power uh, swing here where the shaft's angled like this, because you don't need power. What we can do is, is we can be more accurate with chipping if the shaft's just a little bit more vertical. It works much more like a pendulum that way. So the first thing I want you to do is relax your arms a little bit more so they're a bit closer to your body. Stand a bit closer to it as well so the shaft's a bit more vertical. And finally, move your lead toe out a little bit. What this is going to do is provide simple room for you to get through the shot. That's all I want you to do with setup. So it's nice and much more relaxed, a lot less powerful. The next thing they realize is this. They then control the butt end of this golf club very, very well. What they do is they want the natural force of the club to fall beautifully underneath the golf ball. So the butt end and the, and the bottom part of the club pretty much line up through impact. Okay, just like this. And they're able to do this every single time by allowing it to fall. How they go about doing this is controlling how their body works. So let me show you. I want you to look at this. The first thing I want you to do once you've got your chipping set up is this. I want you to let your wrist hinge a little bit here. What this is doing, look, it's controlling the butt. It's leaving the butt roughly where it is. When the butt's where it is, it's a lot easier now to simply fall down and fall, look, underneath the ball. One of the biggest problems I see with players is this butt on the backswing travels way too far. Now the problem is, you then have to somehow bring it back. And as you bring it back, you end up driving it back too much. Now look at the face. Now the face is wide open, you then get these little yips to try to square it. So stage one is getting a sense of controlling where this butt is by just having a little hinge here, and then let gravity of the club just fall down. Okay, fall down, simple as that. I'm gonna give you a drill in a second to help you really feel this. The second thing they do is, is when this club falls down, it's clearly getting longer. So what they also do now is, is get out of the way to allow the club to beautifully come through the shot. Can you see this? So what I'm doing is, is I'm getting out of the way. I'm moving out of the way. My body's almost kind of pivoting and standing up a little bit here. This look allows the club to slip underneath the golf ball. And where's the butt now? It's actually pointed towards me. So before I give you the dumbbell exercise, let me give you one drill that will really help this, okay? A really great way for you to feel this. I want you to imagine for a second here, you've got a beach ball and you're kind of pushing the beach ball underwater. And what you're doing in reality is this, okay? What's gonna allow the gravity of the club to fall down is arm pressure. If you throw the arm pressure down, that's gonna bring the club downwards, yeah? But we want the club not just to work down, it needs to work around and through, doesn't it? We need, we've just seen we need the, the butt end to be working like this. So the cl club's working on a mini arc through the shot like this. Well, what does, we don't want to guide that artificially because this is what creates all of the yips. We need that force to be happening naturally. So it's flowing, right, under natural gravitational forces. So I want you to imagine you've got a beach ball. Push the beach ball under the, uh, under the water in the pool and just literally just imagine keeping that pressure, throw the arm pressure Where's my arm pressure going? Down and left. 
down and left. Can you see this? Okay, this is what's going to bring the club look beautifully on an arc. So once you've got that sensation, just imagine now, there's the hinge, push the arm pressure. I'm pushing my arm pressure down and where's it also going? Left. What do you notice I'm also doing? I'm pivoting through. It's not, not complicated, it's, quite, it's, it's just a feeling you've got to get used to. A lot of people here would push their arm pressure this way. Now what would happen if you push your arm pressure this way? Well, you drag the handle, the face is open, that creates the yips again, yeah? So when you set, push the arm pressure down and left and get out of the way. And that's going to give you that space to beautifully pop the ball up in the air. So I've got a small hinge in my wrist, push the arm pressure down and get out of the way. Okay, it's really as simple as that. So I'm literally allowing the arm pressure to simply come down here and let the club release through, right? Now, even when I get people to do this, sometimes they mess it up. And one of the reasons is, is they don't allow the natural force to work. So if, mind, if you're pushing your arm pressure down to, to try and get the club working around here, but actually you're hanging on for it, not letting the natural gravity of the club fall, what it should do, then none of this will work. So you need to also learn that feeling. This is where the dumbbell comes in, okay? It's a really nice feeling, this. So we get ourselves set here. This is the square face, okay? And all I want you to do is just get a small little hinge of the dumbbell here. Face naturally would open, as we've just seen here, and then we're gonna let the dumbbell just fall down to square. What do you notice about my hand path as I'm doing this? My hands are going left slightly, which releases a club face to square. Lift and fall, lift and fall. And now it's a wonderful, simple motion. Here, look for me to get out of the way. I can really feel my body wanting to get out of the way to let that dumbbell simply just fall. And this is all your action that you need, okay? There's no drive here, okay? This will leave the first open. I'm not moving the club like this. I'm literally, it's a miniature hinge. And when we move to the bigger pitch shots, you'll see how this exercise is really, really useful. So taking that on board, all I'm gonna do is just imagine that dumbbell here, let that dumbbell fall to square, let the, uh, fall, the toe catch up with the heel look, fall to square, club bottoms out beautifully underneath the ball, and I'd simply go through, okay? So let's look at this in action. You could do it one-handed if you wanted. Pops up beautifully. Hey Presta, a little bit of check there at the end. Super, super simple way of getting that club dropping down onto that golf ball. So we got now 40 yards from the flag, and what changes? How do you just distance control from this motion? How do you make it a little bit longer? Um, well, the same principles apply. We're gonna set up in exactly the same way. I'm still using my 56 degree wedge, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm still gonna try and keep the butt end under control, but clearly I'm gonna have to go a little bit longer now. So using this kind of dumbbell analogy, I'm just gonna have a small little set here, a little bit further, it's starting to work its way up as if I, as if I was gonna go into a full motion, but I'm not. And then I'm gonna let it just fall down. What I'm not gonna do, even though it's longer, which a lot of people do, is suddenly drive, because I've gotta hit it further. That gets the face wide open and then we're going to have to flick it last minute. So I'm going to get this sensation of little hinge, let it fall down, look to vertical and let my body just pivot out of the way. And very, very important here, look, this uh, dumbbell here as it's working down, look, it's working down and it's got my hands are going look left to allow this end, which is the club face, to square up beautifully through the impact area and through. And more importantly, to allow this club to naturally bottom out underneath the golf ball so it's nice and vertical. So I use the bounce and I get maximum spin, okay? Super, super important. So let's have a look at this one. Okay, nice and simple. So one of the things, you know, you might be asking, well, how do I judge distance control? How do I get that kind of close to the fly? Well, some, it's a length of swing, but the most important thing I want you to focus on first is strike, contact. Once you get your contact, you can then simply start to kind of lengthen the swing. And as you do that, you'll start to learn distance control. Some things to watch out for as you're practicing this. I fall into this trap sometimes as well. In fact, if you check out a recent lesson I had with Pete Cowan himself, the, the master short game coach, I'll put that up in this top right hand corner. Um, I sometimes tend to, when I was doing this to me too, drive the handle. In fact, I probably did that a little bit there, just a fraction. Didn't quite allow the natural arm pressure to, to, to let the club fall 
under the golf ball and therefore I didn't quite use the balance as well as I wanted to do. The other thing is, is when you get out of the way, when you let yourself look pressurized and get out of the way, notice this, get out of the way with a pivot. Why? Because you want the club to not just fall down, you want it to come from here and back out in front of you. So I'm down and away. Sometimes for me personally, I would often lean back, I'd, I'd pressure this way and that would get me kind of sometimes fatting it. So, so do watch out for that. But apart from that, this is super, super simple. Let the gravity of the club simply just fall down to the ground here from this position here. Then let yourself get out of the way. Use the dumbbell exercise in order to feel that gravity falling and use the beach exercise to, in a sense to feel the pressure of the arms going down and left to bring the club beautifully back out on an arc and through that impact. And I promise you, you will start to have basically the chipping of your life. You'll start to strike it every single time. And more importantly, it will be super, super accurate, okay? So I hope you enjoy this video. Like I said, if you wanna have some more instruction, or actually watch me go through my paces with why I think is the master coach, P. Cowan, check out this video right here. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, come and join the community. I release videos like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Just press this little button here. And of course, look, check out my website, dannymore.com. Lots more stuff that I don't actually post on YouTube right here, which is gonna help you improve your game. So have a great golfing week.